Hey everyone, this is Fadi from Harvey Productions and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be discussing in details the Antelope Galaxy console. I know it's a very confusing console for a lot of people. It seems to be confusing, but it's also very versatile. It, uh, it allows for a lot of the flexibility and the routing of what these unit offer, which is a pro line unit with tons of IOs, insane amount of IOs. So if you haven't seen my other video, for a complete uh, explanation of the Galaxy Knit and a full review of all the features and the settings of it, make sure you check it out on the channel. And for today's video, we want to dig into the console. We want to navigate through all the settings, features of the console, all the buttons and what they do, and how to route and set up your Galaxy Unit properly. Regardless of what DAW yet you're using, it doesn't matter. We won't be using any DAWs right now. We're actually just using the Galaxy Unit for complete setup. This unit as a standalone has so much power and potential. Uh, so let's kind of dig into it and let's see what we can do. All right, first, when you guys open the Antelope launcher, this is what you see and you'll see your stuff that is connected to the launcher. In this situation, I have my Galaxy. I also have my MRC, which is the little monitor controller. And if you click on that little fader set thing that we will open the console in the back. So I'm gonna close this now. Once I have this, I don't need that. All right, let's go through some basic settings on the console. So at the top section, here's your power, your clock source, external sync, here's your sample rate, which you can switch it. If, okay, let's keep it 48, if, especially because my clock source is internal, but if you have a, an external clock source, then that will control your sample rate. Over here, I you can see the little MRC is being lit, which means it re it's recognizing my MRC. This little eye in here makes the unit blink. So you'd see if you have multiple units, then you see which one is which. And then uh, right here is some basic settings, which shows you the surround EQ is pre or post, which we'll talk about surround in a second. Your panning trim on your monitor outputs. Um, to match other monitors or match specific levels if you want to. Two oscillators that you have that creates an oscillator signal, which is really cool because you get to test specific channels without having to plug stuff to it. Uh, and then brightness on the actual unit. And then the TB latency mode, which is Thunderbolt latency mode, um, they're basically saying is, if you're experiencing some glitches or issues, uh, you should, mess with this to see uh, if that goes away. I have it on the normal, which is the default setting. I've never had any issues with it, uh, so I never had to change it. DC coupled inputs and outputs, which has to do with analog synth units that are being connected to the inputs and the outputs on the back of the unit. I don't fully understand what it does. Uh, there's like a lot of physics behind it. It's a little confusing, so I didn't fully understood it, honestly. Here's your MADI and ADAT inputs and outputs. Um, so this is just that little setting knob up here. Now, in here is your session and info, which in your session is how you save sessions. So here's your project session, software presets, and hardware presets. And when you hover over something, it actually gives you a little bit of information. Project session, I would treat that as the master saving of, if I want to save this right now, and I'm going to save my inputs and outputs, everything, this is kind of my master studio setup and you can save different ones out of this and you can also save uh, only uh, for example if I change a routing to something and I want to save and I only want to save the routing so I will uncheck everything and I would only say for example only save my routing or I made some changes to my AFX which is the DSP plugins on the unit for monitoring special effects I can save only that, or I can even save just a specific one. So they let you choose what to save exactly and then don't touch the rest of it, uh, which is really cool. Then software and hardware presets is whatever you saved, you can put it, assign it to one of these presets. Software presets A to D, uh, you can either trigger them from here by clicking on that A or B or C, or if you have the MRC, they have one A to E, and then these are automatically assigned to the MRC. You can recall specific routing or presets from the MRC. This is also how you would with the MRC using it as a monitor controller by sending to different speakers is you would basically save a routing setup of my mix is going to analog out one and two, which is my first set of speakers. 
and then you save another routing setup, which is my mix is going to output three and four, my second set of speakers, and you would assign one to A and one to B, and that's how you would switch back and forth between different speakers. Hardware presets are the same idea, but the difference, they are physical buttons on the actual unit itself. And that's how you um, would recall them from the unit itself. If you don't have an MRC and you have the unit right, racked right next to you, you can easily recall a specific one from these. Okay, now that we've gone through that section, top left right here, it's really basic. Uh, this is the signal for your ADAT, uh, for your SPDIF, I'm sorry, the first one. And you can, it's almost like a, a, a trim for it. And then same for the ADAT. And then you can link stereo channels and then just it's just a trim. You can turn it up and down. And the down bottom here, load. So it's just shortcuts for load, save, redo, undo, which I love the feature of undo and redo. A lot of consoles, like was my Apollo, I don't think it had that option in it. So if you made a mistake and changed the routing on something, and, uh, and then he was like, oh my God, I don't know what I did. I don't know how to fix it. Uh, the undo here is genius. And thank you, Antelope, for adding this. Matrix is basically a view of your entire matrix if you want to see it, especially if you're comfortable with views that looks like this. Okay, now let's dig in. I highly uh, recommend, uh, do not skip through the video because all the pieces will build on top of each other. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but it's, it's a complex console. I'm gonna try to simplify it as much as I can. And the, uh, the goal is by the end of this, you understand that console, you know your ins and outs of it, and you can create your own even custom routing if you want it, depending on the need of your studio. So let's uh, dig in here. Let's start with the simpler stuff. Uh, meters, left and right. Uh, do you see, you guys see the tabs up here. And if I select meters, it shows me meters. And these are, there are two things. Number one, they're, phys they're meters that you get to see here in front of you. And I can s tell it, what do I want to see? So I'm, for example, selecting right now, I want to see meters for my line inputs one to 32. So if I play my synth, <laughs> You can see it's plugged into channel 27 and 28. And you can see just levels. This is helpful for engineering and making sure nothing is clipping, what's your gain staging, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, meter left is going to be the left screen on your physical unit. And that's what you get to see on the left screen. Meter right is what you get to see on the right screen uh, of the unit. <clears throat> because my unit is over there, I don't really go look over there anyways. So I kind of choose here, what do I want to see? And I kind of create, so for example, my first set of meters, I want to see all of my line inputs. And let's say my second set of meters, I want to see all my ADAT inputs, which comes from my Apollo unit right here. And you can choose whatever you want. That's real simple. Trims, these are digital trims to the analog inputs and outputs on the back of, because these are basically line inputs and line outputs. And then right here, you can see uh, the trim levels. You can either do all, so you trim the entire thing, or you do it manually. You can see I'm trimming my analog synth level a little bit. And they're all in DBU. Line out, line in trims, very simple. The HDX, which is the Pro Tools HDX, because this unit supports HDX, have the same idea for trims right here. I, this is not working right now because I don't have uh, HDX card connected. Um, you can see here, set your delay compensation, your word clock sync and loop master sync. And this is your trims on all of your HDX. Surround, so which we'll get to in a second. Um, actually, you know what? Let's kind of tap into surround right now first, actually. So, one of the things that makes the Galaxy um, like a unique unit is the idea that it has full surround setup compatibility up to 16 speakers. Um, so it kind of puts it in the same level as the Avid MTRX and some of the, uh, the Apollo X16 now supports some surround because it has 16 outputs. Um, the difference with this one that it has a lot more flexibility in terms of EQ and stuff like that than the Apollo, for example, which doesn't have any DSP EQ. So right here, you can see on the left side of the surround, different speaker setups. 
Here's a 2.1, so you see left and right speaker. I'm sorry, 2.0. Here is 2.1, which you get a sub. 3. It says 3 speakers, 3.1. I mean, all the way up to 9.1.16, which is the most sophisticated Dolby Atmos that you would need. Um, and then um, each one of these speakers... Each individual one of these speakers has its own 8-band EQ right here, which is a game changer. So let's let's pull up a simple setup. Let's pull a 2.1. So I got speaker 1, left speaker, right speaker, and my sub. Here's my left speaker. I have 8-band EQ on it, and I can just do whatever I want to. I can go... Uh, I'm doing my room tuning in here, for example, and I realize that I have a dip at 70 hertz, which is very common in a lot of studios. So I'm going to go uh, to my low frequency right here. Here's my low. I'm going to adjust that to 70 hertz. And then here's my gain. Oh, this is the low shelf. Sorry. You got low shelf, high shelf, and then you got the, the Q bands in here. So... Let's just reset this one. Uh, so let's grab this one. So here is 70 hertz. And then how narrow or wide your cue is. And then here you go. Cutting or boosting. Which is amazing that you get to do this. Uh, I mean, I have my Grace controller to do that. And some people use Srinov or whatever. This is very simple it's already baked into the interface so any output's going to come through speaker then you can copy that eq to a speaker right and then that's how you would tune your room um you get eight bands of this um <clears throat> and then the same for the right and then the left the, i'm sorry the lfe which is your sub you can see it's across across over at this point which so if you go up right there to base management you can turn that on or off and if we turn it on, if you pull up a bass management mixer, and you can see here, now you got control over your high pass and filter and low pass. Here's my speaker left, my speaker right. The crossover is set to 80 hertz. I can change that. Here's also my sub, the volume of the sub, and how loud the sub is versus compared to the speakers. I mean, it's a very extensive uh, base management setup for speakers. Um, especially if you don't have like something like the Grace unit or some very fancy monitor controller that allows you to do this, then you got all of that built into your interface, which is amazing. Now, same applies if I would have chosen 7.1. Same thing, I got one sub and seven speakers. I can go to each individual speaker and put a different EQ. And then I can apply that EQ and I can tune my room as much as I want to. Uh, and then you can copy and paste EQs or reset EQs as well, which is absolutely amazing. And here's like, you can also, right here, there's gain, total gain and delay for each speaker. Uh, why is that helpful? If you're using 2.1, that is not that much helpful. But if once you get into surround setup, especially if you have one speaker here and one is like 20 foot back, there's some delay. So you can compensate for the delay or uh, one speaker is a little louder or quieter, so you can adjust this, and that's how you make sure that your setup is uh, set up properly, and they're all delay compensated where you're not hearing things and you're not hearing a slight delay to what you're hearing. So basically, it's everything you would need for a surround setup. And here's your surround level is up here. You can even have a little controller out of it that you can pin somewhere and then just control, mute, or dim. This is your stereo monitor controller, and this is the surround controller. They're two different things, which we'll see that in just a second on the patching side. But I wanted to mention that now so you understand surround and just your normal stereo monitors are two different. Uh, you can use your surround features and apply it to two set of speakers only like a stereo set, but you have to route it properly to be able to access that feature. This is here, your surround bypass surround, bypass the surround EQ, bypass around delay or bypass the total delay on your surround setup. Uh, so this is, and you can see here the, the monitors right here, you can see they're changing according to what setup I have. If I have a 2.1, 2, 2.1, up to 
So you can see, like if I choose the highest one, you can see all 16 speaker levels up there. This is surround. Um, I don't, you guys can see, I have 2.0. I'm not using surround yet. And all my EQs are flat because I'm using my Grace design for this uh, for right now. Mic emulation is, if you have, I don't have any of the mic emulations from Antelope Audio. I, I don't use any of them. But this is how you would set up the emulations for your mics. And this tap is dedicated for that. Now, AFX. AFX is Antelope's version of DSP plugins that are being processed off the actual unit for zero latency. The only difference that in Antelope Audio versus, for example, like a UA, Universal Audio. Universal Audio, these plugins work as an inserts on each individual channels. On the Antelope, they work more like a soundboard. Basically, you got effects channels and you send audio to an effect channel and you send it back and then you choose where it goes. Uh, why is that? What's the pros and cons? Pro is that uh, this is a bit more professional because it, it looks like what an analog console would have been, but then also because you're sending and receiving, it would allow you to do something that the Universal Audio wouldn't do before, is the, I can now record the dry signal, and then I can grab back that uh, process signal and uh, assign it to a different input in my DAW and record that as well. In Universal Audio, you would only be able to either monitor or record, but now I could do both. I can record it, print it, as well as print the dry signal. Or I can, for example, have the um, another cool advantage is uh, in my control room, I'm listening only to the dry signal. And for my artists out there that is tracking that they want some verb and stuff on their vocals, for example, I'm sending them the wet signal. But as an engineer in here, I want to listen to my pure dry signal to make informative decisions on the sound quality of what I'm doing. Uh, so this is the advantage of how the AFX is being set up. Now, the, the con is it feels a little bit more complex because it's a bit more work versus just you drop an insert on something. Um, now let's explain this. The Galaxy has 32 AFX channels, 32 mono uh, channels or 16. And when you pair them, it will become 16 stereo. And you can see here, I can scroll between all of them. So let's, let's say I'm going to use channel one and two right now. And I'm going to actually stereo link them because I want to process my analog synth, which is a stereo channel. So right here, you can load your effects. And these are all the effects that from the, these are the ones that came with the unit and the grayed out ones is the one that I haven't purchased. This is, so let's put, for example, um, chorus. And then I'm gonna add also an EQ. So it's like a Pultec bit side EQ on a high shelf, low shelf. Actually, let's, and then you can add another effect. Here's a compressor, 76. Here's another compressor. Okay, that's at the maximum one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can only, so you can have eight stacked plugins per one effect channel. Uh, now, because of the Galaxy, it, it supports up to 128 effects plugins, which is tons. Uh, that's basically eight per channel. So you here's here's you guys can see all the effects that I have, and then you here's how I would scroll through them, choose which one that I want to process, then you can bypass it on and off, and then I can also save presets, um, load presets that they have, or save a preset for my chain, basically my entire chain, which is a really cool feature that they have in here that because once you build a chain, you can save that chain. And right now this is Effects one and two, if I go to three, now it's blank again, and then I get to put in it whatever I want to put in it. This is how you would load your chain. Now how you route audio to that chain and back and record it, we're gonna do that in patching, but you, you understand now what how the AFX uh, works. This is also bypass all, so it bypasses all of your effects, delete all, bypass all of that channel. You can delete all of 
the effects on that channel. <clears throat> And you don't have to work in stereo, obviously you can also work in mono, so only channel 3 and I can, for example, put, uh, let's say I want to put an EQ, full tack EQ on channel 3. Um, that's it. Cool, th the plugins in here, they're, um, I really like how they sound. It's actually very impressive. I was worried because I'm used to the UA plugins, which I love how they sounded. These ones actually sound pretty good and um, they're very competitive with the UA in terms of quality wise. All right, so here's all of the AFX. Now, mixers, let's go to mixers. Mixers is the Galaxy's um, version of what headphone mixes or Q mixes are. Uh, especially if you came from like an Apollo, for example, that's what the Q mix would have be. Uh, you have four mixers in that unit. Mixer one, two, three, and four. Each mixer have up to 32 channels of audio. So you guys can see here, here's all my 32, and there is like a master fader for that headphone mix. And then all these channels, they can be stereo, and then linked like right here, I'm, so here's like my synth. And now if I link it, now this become together, stereo channel or unlink it, and then you can hard pan left and right. Um, and this is just basically four levels. This is mixer four. And then you would take that stereo mix and then send it to somewhere, the, a headphone preamp, uh, send it to somewhere outside in the other room, um, it, which we will do that in the patching. But this is how you, uh, what we do in the mixer. So the mixer looks very basic, very simple only 32 channels of whatever you put in that mixer. The difference is you have got mixer, so up here you choose mixer four, three, so each one is four different mixes. The only difference is mixer one, it's the only mixer you guys can see, it has an extra thing in here. It has a built-in reverb, which is really cool because it's, uh, instead of using the AFX, if, if the artist out there wants quick reverb on their vocals, then use mixer one for them and then it becomes sends right here and i just send them real quick so here's so here's my synth and then i can just add a little bit of verb on that synth and then here's all the verb settings which is your color pre-delay uh reflection late reflection richness reverb time reverb level it's just basic reverb settings and then they also have some presets in here for the verb. And it sounds good, I like that verb. I just wish, and this is one thing, uh, I wish they would have done that to all four mixers. Because if I have more than one artist out there and they all want verb in their ears, but they want separate mixes, I'm not able to do this with that setup. Because I'm only stuck with that uh, built-in reverb only on mixer one. Okay, so this is the four mixers, which is your headphone cue mixes. <clears throat> now let's go to the big one, which is the routing. This is the heart of the unit. It's basically where you take audio from one place, send it to the other place, especially because that unit has insane amount of IOs. And you guys, if you haven't watched the video, you should look up the Galaxy review and spec video that I did on YouTube, because it explains all the IOs, all the inputs and the outputs of that unit and the compatibility of it, how many inputs and how many outputs and the digital versus the analog and all that stuff. So I'd highly recommend watching that video before you dig into this section. All right, so now let's go here. Let's look at our IOs and let's look at how this is being set up and how we route audio in the proper site. So you got, it's being, the screen is being split into two sections, top section and bottom section. And in everything that you're doing, you have audio coming from somewhere, going to somewhere and in reverse. And on the left side here vertically, it tells you what that horizontal line is and what does it do. Uh, some of it are self-explanatory. So for example, that first row, it says line input one to 32, which will be the physical line inputs on the back of the unit. And the, you got 32 of them. And you can label any of these however you want. So I can go to like channel number one, and you, can, you guys can see here, and I'm gonna call it, for example, U 
67. So this is where my U67 is connected, or this is where my a specific preamp is connected or something like, obviously you don't connect the mic directly to here. Um, this, uh, because these are line inputs, but you can label them. So you can see here, I have some labeled and here's like my poly D labeled where my synth that we're using right now for testing. So this is inputs. This is the DAW outputs, which is in any time inside your software, whether it's Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton, Cubase, whatever it is, and you send and you see outputs on each channel and you say output one and two, output three and four, output five and six, that's what those are. Um, you guys can see in my setup, I have like main left and right, which is my main mix. And then I have mix B, mix C, mix D and mix E. And I set those that way so I can send separate mixes. Um, from my DAW to reference, and then I would assign those and patch them into different places, which I'll explain in a second. Channel 17 to 32, those are my summing, uh, and which goes more to my summing mixer. But they need to be assigned inside the DAW first, and then we would choose where they go on what physical inputs and outputs. So this is digital patching, basically playback output from your DAW. And you got 64 of them because that unit has 64 inputs and outputs. Up here is the DAW outputs. At the bottom right here, you guys see DAW inputs. Whenever you connect an interface to your computer, that interface has a maximum amount of input and output being recognized inside your computer. So if you had an Apollo, for example, it would have a maximum amount of, let's say 64. Um, some interfaces have more, some interfaces have less, depending. So this interface is 64 IO. Um, well, but the actual interface itself has more than 64 channels in it because you have 32 line inputs and 32 line outputs, but you also have 64 MADI and then you got 64 HDX and you got eight ADAT and two SPDIF and uh, 64 Dante. You know, there is, I mean, we're talking hundreds of channels right now, but when you plug it to your computer, inside your computer, there's only 64 that you're recording at the same time or recognizing at the same time. That's what DAW inputs and outputs are. That's the 64 inputs and outputs are. Now I'm gonna go have a, have a pool of audio inputs and outputs and I'm gonna select from those and grab them into my 64. So I'm gonna grab 8 ADAT and 32 Dante and 12 Matty and 12 analog inputs, whatever, to make up for all 64 channels. That's what the DAW out and the DAW in at the bottom right here are. After that, you see Dante input 1 to 64, because I'm running at 48, so I'm getting all 64 of them. HDX input 1 to 64, Matty input 1 to 64, ADAT input all eight of them. SPDIF input, stereo SPDIF input, effect outputs. So this is the, the stuff that are coming back from the AFX that we just did. So it, it goes as a, so their effect out goes as an input on this side. Here's the output of the mixers, the four mixers that we said. So that will be the stereo output of the entire mix that comes in here as an input. Here's the mic emulation outputs that comes in here as an input. And here's the surround outputs after the EQ and the processing and comes in here as an input. That's why all of these are shown at the top section, which is the input section. Now let's go to the bottom section. And then the bottom section is the gonna be the reverse, it's the output. 32 physical line outputs that are coming from the unit because it has physical 32 line outputs. There are DB25, four of them. Here's the monitor outputs, which the unit on the back has uh, two TRS dedicated monitor outputs. Here's your DAW inputs, what we just explained. That's what you're gonna see in Pro Tools or Logic, whatever you record, is gonna be those 64 channels. Dante out, so the 64 Dante out, 64 HDX out, 64 MADI out, 64, uh, I'm sorry, eight ADAT output, eight SPDIF output, and 32, AFX output. This is the audio that goes to the AFX. And then this is the 32 channels of each mixer. 
because you remember each mix has 32. So what are being previewed and those or what 32 channels are you sending to that mixer? That to be determined right here is the mic emulation inputs and then the surround inputs. Okay, let's kind of take a, a simple example and let's uh, try to apply that example to how do we patch it. I have right now my analog synth is plugged into physical input 27 and 28, line input 27 and 28. All right, basic, I wanna record that into my DAW. So I'm gonna need to drag these two from here and then I'm gonna need to drag them and put them somewhere on my DAW input. So this horizontal line, and you see once I drag that and put it in there, now it carries the same line. Now, if in my DAW, if I open Pro Tools and I play my synth and I wanna record it, I'm gonna choose in Pro Tools or Logic, whatever, I'll choose input 27 and 28. They don't have to be one-to-one. -one. I can take that same two channels and I can add them to input the last two inputs, which is input uh, 61 and 60, 62. I'm sorry, 63 and 64, the last two. And you guys can see it. So now I have this actually double patched, which is one of the cool things that this unit allows you to do double patching input and double patching output so you can duplicate channels for whatever you want. Um, so this is how you would see so mute as I'm removing that patch that I just did. This is how you would see that channel in my DAW. Now this applies, you guys can see here, um, I have <clears throat> my heritage audio are connected to my DAW, my analog summing, all of that stuff. Scenario number two. Now I wanna take that specific um, analog synth, I wanna send it to headphone mix one and I want people to be able to hear it, especially the ones that are getting headphone mix one. So I'm gonna go down here to mixer one and I'll grab the poly D and then I put it down there. You guys can see it. And you can put it anywhere on the mixer, it doesn't matter. So now if I go to mixer, uh, so you gotta go to the mixer tab, which is right here. I'm gonna go to mixer one and then you guys can see right there, it shows the poly D that we just added. And then you can see the signal for it. This is how you would, for example, you got a singer, you got their mic, you route it into mixer one, send it to headphone mix to their ears, and then they won't be like, hey, I want less, I want quieter, I want louder. That's how you would do it. Okay, and that's all for all four mixers. So area number three, I wanna take that channel, I wanna send it to my AFX. I wanna process that analog synth a little bit. So I'm gonna take here my line inputs that I have, which are these two, and I'm gonna drag these and I wanna put them to my AFX. So where does that go? It's gonna to go to AFX output or input. So uh, output from the analog synth goes input into the AFX. So I'm gonna grab these two I'm gonna grab that right here. And then I'm gonna put it right down there at the here, AFX input channel one and two, because that's the one that we loaded a lot of stuff. And then to just make sure that this is actually working, I'm gonna pull up my AFX right now. I'm gonna pull up my first two channel of AFX. Here you go. Let's see if we're getting, you got it. You can see now my bass is going through this. This is not what we're hearing yet though. Now that I did this, now I need to go to my AFX outputs, which are these two, and I can label it. So in this case, I'm gonna label it uh, poly D wet, which is my process signal left, and poly D wet right. So this is what's coming back from the AFX. Now, what is coming back from the AFX, what, where do I want to hear that? I want to record it. Okay, then I'll take that and put it into my DAW inputs, whatever channel it is. So say I put it right here so they're next to each other so you guys can see. Now you can see channel 27 and 28 is going to be my poly D dry signal, but these two channels, which I believe will be 59 and 56, 
will be my PolyD wet signal. And then in Pro Tools, I get to record either or both. Okay, I want to hear that in my mixer as well. So I'll take the same two outputs. And then I'm going to put this on my mixer one right here. Okay, now if I go to the mixer, you guys can see there's two sets of PolyD here. And let's link them. You see this channel is doubled up right now. The one on the left side is my dry signal and the yellow one coming from the AFX is my wet signal. The artist says I want the wet, here you go, or do you want the dry, here you go. And then I can put, for example, let's say mixer one is for the artist, so they get to hear, they want the wet. Mixer two is for me only, so I'm going to go to mixer two, that's in the control room. I'm only hearing the dry signal because I don't want to hear any of those effects. Or you can put both. So this is scenario number two, how I routed this. Uh, scenario, now let's talk about how we take headphone outputs and we get those two physical units for headphone outputs. So right here you got your mix one, mix two, left and right, mix three, left and right, mix four, left and right. So there are four stereo mixes or eight mono mixes. All right, let's say I have a headphone distribution amp and I want to take from the line outputs of the back of the unit, go to a headphone distribution amp and send that somewhere. So I'm going to take mix one, left and right. I'm going to take this and you, you see down here are line outputs. I'm going to take this and put it on my first two. So now line output one and two becomes my first headphone mix. And then I'll keep going. Mixer two becomes my line output three and four and, 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 and that's how you would send headphone mixes to physical line outputs from the back of the unit. And then you get to send that to headphones. Uh, another application for this would be my summing. How am I running my summing? So the way you sum, you come in your DAW, you're sending, whether you're summing eight channels or 16, you're sending, I do 16. So I have 16 channels, eight stereo coming from my DAW. I want to send this through the physical line outputs of the unit. I wanted that to go to my dangerous music unit. They receive 16, they sum them into a stereo channel and that stereo channel comes back physically into my unit, then comes back physically into uh, or digitally into my uh, DAW so I can record my summing. Okay, how we're doing this. We're going to start, follow the signal path the same way that it goes. So the, this signal is going to start on my DAW so here's my DAW and here's the 16 channels I dedicated for summing in my DAW, which is channel 17, DAW output 17 to 32. So in my DAW, I'm going to assign the output of those from 17 to 32. Now I'll take all of these, drag them into the physical line outputs of my Apollo, uh, I'm sorry, of my analog. So I'm going to drag this down and put it into the physical line output of my Galaxy unit. In this case, I'm using physical line output 17 to 32 on the back of my unit. Now I have two DB25 cables come out of 17 to 32. Goes to my um, dangerous music. I use the dangerous bus LT. Goes to that. And then I have a stereo left and right coming back into my analog channel 29 and 30 at the top in here. Now I want to record that, so I need to grab these two and drag it and put it into my DAW, which is right now I'm recording it right here into my DAW. Okay, it feels a little confusing, but let me simplify it again. Follow your signal path. Where is it starting and where is it end? I'm starting in my DAW, so I'm going to grab DAW output. Okay, which physical line outputs I want to send it to? I want to send it to physical line outputs 17 to 32. So drag that put into 17 to 32. Okay, what coming in, coming in is I plugged it into the back of the unit at channel 29 and 30. Okay, then grab 29 and 30. Where do you want to record them in your DAW? Do you want to record them in DAW input 29 and 30 or DAW input 1 and 2 or 3 and 4? Anything you want. The cool thing here is I can literally take this and I can record it anywhere. I can also send my summing to my AFX and have a plugin on it to be processed. I can take my summing sending to my headphone mixes. I can take my summing 
send it to ADAT output one and two, and then send that to my monitor controller. And then that way I can listen to my mix with summing and without summing. I mean, the flexibility of the routing in here is incredible. And that's what I love uh, the routing features in here. I can take that um, sum mix and then I can uh, send that to line output. So the summed mix, which is a stereo summed mix, I will send that to line output three and four. And let's say I have my SSL fusion connected to this. So I take that, send it to line output three and four, send it to my SSL fusion hardware unit, process it there, bring it back into whatever light inputs I want to bring it in and then record it into my DAW. Now again, this becomes literally a full digital patch bay where any signal coming from anywhere going anywhere. Uh, I'm just going to walk through a couple more examples here because sometimes just explaining the logic, it gets confusing, but once we put it into a practical example, it makes sense and then you can take some of these examples and apply them to your studio. So let's take an ADAT example here. Um, so I have, I use the Behringer P16, the power play, the monitor units and my control and my live tracking room out there. Now this unit takes ADAT inputs. So uh, this unit have one set of ADAT. I also have a MADI unit that has more ADAT to it. But regardless, um, let's say I have a, uh, the poly D. I want to send that in a stereo channel to my ADAT so that they can hear it out there on the Behringer unit. So I will find where's my ADAT outputs. They're right down there. So I'm going to grab the poly D, left and right, and I'm going to choose which ADAT channels they're going to receive. Let's say it's going to be channel one and two. So right now, that poly D, it goes, is being sent out to ADAT channel one and two, which will be channel one and two on my P16. Let's say you have um, um, <clears throat> okay, another application here is main mix. Here's my main mix. This is my stereo mix from my DAW. So when I'm mixing in my DAW, my stereo left and right is going to be my first DAW output left and right. Okay, I want to send my main mix to multiple places, and I normally do, for multiple reasons. So we'll walk through it here. All right, my main mix, let's say if you're using the physical stereo outputs on the back of the unit for your monitors, then I'm going to need to drag that main mix. I want to go to monitor, left and right, and I'm put it there, which means my stereo output from my monitors are actually my mix. Could be my headphone mix, could be anything. I can drag and put in it whatever I want. Okay, I'm also sending my main mix via SPDIF to my TC electronic. So then I'm going to grab my main mix and I'm going to send it out here under SPDIF out down here. Now my SPDIF outputs on the unit are receiving my main mix. I'm also sending my main mix to my Dante output. So I'm going to take my main mix and I'm going to put it here to, uh, sorry, that's the wrong place. So see, I did a wrong, uh, routed something wrong right now, put it in the wrong place. So this is where the undo comes in really handy and then it undid it for me. I'm going to take the main mix and I'm going to put it into my Dante output. Here you go, left and right. Why? Because I my Grace design unit is receiving Dante from my, H, my uh, Galaxy. So that's how I'm getting my monitor controller and main mix. Um, okay, I want to send that main mix to uh, a summing unit. I want to send that main mix to Maddie. I want to send that main mix, so just drag it and drop it this way. Same applied to headphone mixes, same applied to effects channels. You can take anything and drag it into anywhere. And this is what that view is. Once you set that up, I mean, this is really something you normally set up one time. And if you do a proper setup for your studio, just save it and then you're done. Also, these little tabs right here, top and bottom, they hide what you're not using. So for example, right now, I'm not using HDX currently in my setup. So I can just go to the HDX and I can hide them. So see, now it looks a little cleaner. I am not using MADI input. I'm only using MADI output on my setup. So I'm going to go top here, MADI in, and I'm going to mute those. 
or hide them. And I'm also not using Dante input, I'm only using Dante output. So see now it looks a lot simpler, cleaner. I'm not using SPDIF input, I'm also using only SPDIF output. So I'm hiding that one as well, and I'm not using the mic emulation, and currently I'm not using the surround. But I'll leave that because we're going to explain something on it. So see now this setup looks simpler, and then go to the bottom here and do the same thing. Okay, next, let's talk about how do you route to your, uh, we did the AFX routing and we understand that now. Now, how do you route to your surround setup and how do you set it up? Because it's not just set up on its own. So let's say, I uh, let's, let's choose right now a basic stereo setup. So it's just left and right and that's all what it is. Okay, so if I wanna just send my stereo mix to the surround so that way I can tap into the room EQ feature. I'm gonna take right here my main mix, which is my DAW output, left and right, here's my main mix, and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna take it into my surround input. So here you go, it's gonna go down here to my surround input. And then I'm gonna take my surround output, which is right here, these two channels, my surround output, and I get to send this to whatever I wanna hear that mix. So uh, in this case, um, I'm, I'm listening through Dante output one and two, so I'm gonna take surround output one and two, I'm gonna put it right there into Dante output one and two. And I can call this whatever I want. Now let's go to surround. And this is, I'm, I'm setting it up as stereo. Now I get to EQ that, uh, surround output that is go to my speaker according to my room tuning, whatever it is. So let's say I put a, a little EQ in here. Okay, let's put let's let's say that's the room EQ, and I'm gonna copy this from my left speaker, and then I'm gonna put it on my right speaker. So here's going, but both speakers have the same EQ right now. Now I'm gonna go back into my routing, grab my surround outputs, and then send that to whatever feeds my monitors. So that would be my monitor outputs, would be my um, Dante output, because in my setup, my Dante is what feeds my monitors uh, through my Grace design, whatever it is. Now you are listening to your surround outputs. Now if I play iTunes or something, um, so let's see if I can... You guys can see now what I whatever I played from iTunes, which is my main mix, left and right, which is the DAW output left and right, is actually going through my surround setup. Now that is means it's also going through the EQ that I applied before it hits my speakers. Now you could use that EQ to uh, EQ anything you want. It's actually really cool because I can, uh, instead of EQing my speakers, I can set it to a surround and EQ some headphone pre's. Uh, I mean, there's like a lot of flexibility to it depending on what your setup looks like and how would you apply it to that setup. I think this is a, a wrap. Try to simplify it as much as I can. Um, you got inputs, you got outputs, so you're dragging everything and then you're patching them to where you want them to go. And then as long as you understand where is the audio coming from, and is going to just follow. I always tell my students, follow your signal path. The audio is coming from a mic, going to a, heart, a, a pre, that pre goes to a line input on my Galaxy. Okay, then I track that line input. What do I want to do with it? Do I want to send it to AFX to be processed with some EQ and compression using the plugins? Or do I want to take that directly and record it into my DAW? Or do both, send it to an AFX and then bring it back and record a wet signal and take it, record it immediately a dry signal, also send it to a headphone mix and the mixers, also send it to my ADAT for their ears. So you can just choose where these things go and how do you route it, and then how, that's how you build your setup. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comment, but also if you want like more extensive setup for your studio, because I do this, I do a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, especially Zoom sessions where I can remote access your computer and help you with your setup, uh, make sure you shoot me an email. My email is in the description. It's fadi at harbyproductions.org uh, and you'll see it in the comments below. 
shoot me an email. I can schedule a session with you and help you with your uh, studio setup. I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you guys at the next one.